Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tacoma Cyclist. I'm Tacoma Cyclist, and kind of like over there. Well, that's the boogeyman. A super high-end automated pan system there. Uh, well, let's see. Today, we're joining you from a rest day, active recovery. So. A quick update to the vlog for those of you that have been following along. Um, I'm in my rest week right now, which at first I thought I was going to hate because who really wants to just either sit here and do next to nothing or literally do nothing and take a day off. But I did take Monday off, completely off, and it felt kind of weird. And Tuesday, which was yesterday, I did 30 minutes or so, a little over 30 minutes. Uh, and did a whopping 10 kilometers. Today, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do maybe 30 to 45 minutes, 10 to 15 kilometers tops. Um, super low power, flat roots on Zwift, and we'll see how it is. But honestly, I've been feeling a lot of tension just leaving my legs and my lower back, which is great. Uh, so hopefully uh, on Saturday when I start to ramp things back up again, and then Sunday when I retest my FTP, hopefully things will be in, in great position. Now my weight did something kind of weird. Uh, it went just off a cliff uh, for a couple days. And part of that is I think, you know, I upped my workout activity, my intensity, my duration, uh, and I started cutting calories. And, you know, I was in a stasis before where my weight was staying about the same, my power was staying about the same, and my effort was staying about the same. So by increasing the power and increasing the intensity and the workload, and then decreasing the calorie intake, my body kind of stayed in the same range for a few days, for a couple weeks, and then I just went and I dropped way too much weight, way too fast. Uh, the good news is I was able to put it right back on. Um, I know that's probably not the good news that most people think of, but yeah, you don't want to lose weight that quickly. So uh, I put it right back on. Now I'm about a kilogram lighter. I'm in the 65 kilogram range. Uh, I want to get down to 63, but I dropped down to 61, uh, like within three days, and five kilograms in three days is too much, too fast, and that's that's cruising for illness or injury. So the purpose of today's video, um, other than to just give you a quick update on my progress, uh, is to talk about cycling computers. Now, if you check out uh, up here, it's probably going to be up here because. I don't know, I always get it the wrong way. I think it's going to be over here. Um, I'm going to put a link to my video where I talked about us dropping Garmin and going to Wahoo. Well, about a year ago, we decided we had enough of the Wahoo ecosystem, and we went back to Garmin. And there's for a couple reasons, really. Um, so I'm going to take just a couple minutes to compare the Garmin 830, which is what we have, to the Wahoo element. And then I'm going to tell you, well, I'll tell you now, that I actually just placed a pre-order for a Hammerhead Karoo 2. Uh, the pre-order is supposed to be shipping in the February time frame. And I've heard some people who place pre-orders who never got them, like vaporware kind of things. So, you know, mark your calendars. It's like January 26th. They said it's supposed to be like middle to late February. So, you know, five weeks or so. Uh, I'll put a link, actually I'll just, you know, I'll cover up this section of the video here and I'll just show you some of the stuff on their website about the actual product. It is supposedly 40% smaller than the previous one, which is great because the previous one was uh, flipping huge. And uh, it has all sorts of connectivity like you would normally uh, want, including radar support, which is something that's important to me. And uh, it does notifications and it does actually wireless like uh, i mean like cellular uh 3g if you have a sim card i do have an extra sim card i've got you know for some reason when they sign me up for my plan they're like we'll give you an extra line for free i'm like i don't want it and they're like well it's cheaper so i have one so i'll try it i'll see if it works so anyway um had the garmin for a year why am i looking at a new product well, I'll tell you, honestly, uh, I'm looking at the new product because I kind of want to just compare it and see and put up a review and all that kind of fun stuff and see if you guys like it. 
you know, because I'm doing my civic duty and stuff. But I will admit, there's a few things about the Garmin, which I, I do actually kind of like. Um, there's a few things about it that drive me nuts, too. And there were obviously enough things about the Wahoo that drove me nuts to make me want to leave that platform. So let me kind of talk through the things that I really, really like about both of these and what I'm hoping to see out of the next uh, cycling computer that I'm getting, which is that, that Hammerhead Carew. Uh, it is a little bit larger than these, uh, probably about the same size as the Element, if maybe not just a touch larger. But um, yeah, I'm not overly concerned about I'm not really concerned about that. Okay. Uh, the things that kind of drove me nuts about the Wahoo. Well, it became really unreliable. And it didn't take very long for that to happen either. So, the first time the memory filled up on this thing, um, you, you definitely had to dump it, and then you had to do a full system restart. And, and that was the case for both mine and the Boogeyman's. We had to do full memory restarts on this thing all the time. If you did an update, you know, like a, a, a patch update, you know, they would release their updates on a regular basis. It was a pain. I couldn't, like, in, in many situations, I'd have to sit there and cycle through the menus over and over again to try to get it to do it. I'd use the Wahoo app. I couldn't get some updates to load at all. And then, magically, two weeks later, they're like, oh, we loaded it for you. That seemed kind of annoying. And again, it wasn't just on mine. It was on his, too. So both of these computers had the exact same kind of problems. In general, these were pretty reliable, um, and, and they got a lot of time and distance on these elements. So I'm not trashing them. I think they're for the, right, for the person who's looking for this type of computer, this is a great choice. They are reliable. Uh, we got them wet, we got them nasty, we got them gross, and they still worked. Their battery life's pretty good, too. I'll give them credit for that. Battery life lasts a long time on these, uh, even towards the end. Now. Uh, a couple other things that drove me nuts about these, though. First of all, I mean, come on. I'm going to put that up there. These graphics. These graphics just scream Casio 1989. I mean, yeah, I know they've come out with the newer versions uh, that have slightly better graphics, but they're really the same. I mean, they, they have a little bit of color, and they've got, like, six colors. It's 2021, guys. I mean, get with the times. This is this is unacceptable in this day and age. The the lack of touchscreen that doesn't bother me. I don't really care whether it's got a touchscreen or not. I like the functionality of the buttons, um, although sometimes they're not always the easiest to press either. So one thing that drove me bonkers on this: the gear selections on this. You know, it'll register your if you have electronic gearing, it'll register those. Both mine and the Boogeyman's, we could never get it to work correctly. No matter which way we did it, it always read the, the front chain ring backwards. So if you put in the big chain ring was your big chain ring size, and your little chain ring is your little chain ring size, when you got back and you looked at all the data, it'd be like, you were in your little chain ring most of the time. You're like, I was in a flat crit. I was in my big chain ring the whole time. Like, no, you weren't. You were in your little chain ring. Okay. So I flipped the data fields around. I'm like, okay, well, I'll put my... It didn't matter. It always did it backwards. I don't know how, I don't know why, but it always did it backwards. And then probably the biggest deal breaker for us was um, GPS reliability on this. Again, it's 2021, 20 guys. There's, there's at least three major satellite networks you can choose from. And for us to constantly lose GPS signal on this thing, and I mean, like, we'd be going for an hour and a half long segment, a mountain climb, and it would completely throw out the entire segment because it's like, oh, you, you, you drifted off segment too many times because the GPS drift on this was so bad. And we had full southern exposure to the skies um, the entire time, but the altitude drift and all that caused it to drop. That was the kind of final nail in the coffin for this for me. Will it work? Yeah, I mean, for, for the vast majority of people out there, this is still a great unit. Uh, it's relatively easy to read in most lighting conditions. Um, you can make the screen bigger and smaller. I, I, I like it. It's not bad. Notifications were generally pretty good on this. As long as you synced your phone to the device, then it worked. So, we got rid of those about a year ago. And enter the Garmin 830. Um, 
We chose this over the 530 because we wanted the touchscreen capability. That was the biggest thing. Uh, it's got some nice mountain bike features, and we occasionally throw our legs over a mountain bike, although usually whenever I do, it involves first aid kits too. So what was the first thing that drew my attention to this? Well, if you guessed a nice, attractive uh, color screen, then you guessed correctly. Um, it's nice. It's very clear. It's very easy to see. I will say in some situations if the sunlight's bouncing off the reflectiveness of the screen, it does get hard to see. But most of the things that I just complained about with regards to the Wahoo are way better with this. Uh, I've had minimal issue with satellite dropping. Uh, I have had it happen, but nowhere near as frequently as I did with the Wahoo. Uh, sometimes the one with the Wahoo is just comically bad. So, uh, battery life? Good. It's perfectly fine. I've never find my I've never found myself in a situation where I was uh, completely hosed with regards to the battery. One exception, one caveat. You got to shut this off the right way. Um, there's been a few times, many times, where I've come in to go for a ride, threw my computer on, turned it on, and it's a battery empty. And I'm like, I literally charged it yesterday, right before I rode. Well, if you don't actually power it down and you just do sleep mode, that battery just keeps running and you'll wake up the next day and it's gone. So just check that every once in a while. That's kind of annoying. <clears throat> it is also robust. It can take a drop, it can take a hit, it can take water, all of those things. One of the things that Garmin is kind of famous for is they, they build a pretty good platform overall and then all of the ancillary stuff that they add onto it just doesn't work that well. You know, they, they, people often say that, um, you know, Garmin's beta testers are its customers, and I, I kind of believe that. Overall, this thing's been pretty stable. It's been pretty cool. Uh, I kind of dig it. Uh, and I'm not, like, rushing out to buy a new one again because I'm like, I hate this thing and I want to throw it in the trash. It's perfectly fine. And I'll be happy to use it if the other one sucks. But my notifications have never worked on this. Um, not once. And again, this is not limited to me. Uh, I'm an IT guy. I know how to set up Bluetooth sync and all that kind of stuff. I have never gotten a text message notification on this. And, and I want them. I need them. I need my phone. I need what I'm writing for my phone to tell me I'm getting a phone call or that I'm getting a text message because uh, what I do for a living involves me being available at off hours from time to time. So I find myself having to pull over and check my phone from time to time. And that's kind of annoying. Uh, it says that it works. The Boogeyman's works about 20% of the time. I may be being generous. His works, but only occasionally. Uh, live track. I think the live track thing is a really cool feature. He's a kid. I want to see when he's riding to and from my house. I want to see that. Um, I want to know, like, hey, he was supposed to be here 15 minutes ago. Why isn't he here yet? I want to look on the map. Again, it's hit and miss. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. We don't use the accident detection feature. Uh, I had, I've heard too many horror stories of people who have their loved ones notified, oh my god, someone's so crashed, and all they did was stop for a stoplight and uh, maybe stopped a little faster than they wanted to. Didn't look at their computer, and sure enough, their, their loved ones are getting notified, your husband's been in a crash. Uh, we don't use that. <clears throat> um, but it would sure be nice if the live track feature, you know, worked all the time, every time. So the Bluetooth connection between this and the phone is kind of annoying. And in fact, the Boogeyman, almost every time we get back from a ride, has to unpair his Garmin from his phone, from the app, repair the Garmin to the phone, to the app, so that he can upload a ride. Otherwise, he has to manually upload it by way of USB. I don't have that problem, but I have had the problem. So it's like, I don't have it every time. He has it every time. I have it one out of every 30 rides. It's kind of annoying, but it's not enough to make me like throw this in the trash. Now, uh, one thing that does, mm, one thing I'd really like to see on this. I want to see my five second power. I want to see my one minute power, and I want to see my five minute power. And Garmin doesn't seem to understand that when I say I want my five second power, they don't, I don't want the last five seconds of power that I just did. I want to see my best five seconds of power. If I'm doing a sprint effort in a training interval, 
I need to know what my five second output was. That's not available on here. It's just not available. Um, I, I wanna see what my one minute power was over the course of a ride. Now I can go into Strava at the end and check these things, but sometimes I wanna see right then, cause maybe I'm doing sprint intervals and I wanna see, I need to say what's, what was my five second sprint power? How can I focus on improve, improving that? It's not there. Instead, I've had to download this Garmin IQ app which only works some of the time. This, this little, well, you can't see it, but there's an app in here that, that scrolls through and tells me my best five second, my best 20 minute, my best one minute. The, the developer's great for having done that, but unfortunately, the way that it works, it goes by so fast, you can't make out what's going on. Like, it's just a blur of numbers a lot of times. So it, it, doesn't, it doesn't help me. That was something that was available on the Wahoo. Wahoo gets it. They don't, I don't care what my last five seconds was. Uh, or even if I do, you know, maybe I'm doing a TT and I want to know what my last one minute of power was. I also want to know what my best one minute of power is. And that's just a, it's, it's a simple calculation. And Garmin, you should figure that out. You shouldn't rely on your third party app developers to do that. So I think that's about it. I mean, am I happy with this? Yeah. Uh, I think the directions, the, the GPS, the, the routing, the maps are better on this by far. Uh, one other quick tip, by the way, I've noticed this on all Garmin head units. When you're using the mapping function, um, <laughs> if it's telling you to turn left, uh, you, you actually almost have to, like, you're already, you physically are already past the turn that it's telling you to turn on. So like, if you've got a bunch of roads that are real close to each other, and it's like, turn left here. It's probably the one that's five feet behind you, not the one that's five feet in front of you. So bear that in mind. It's, it tends to be a little slow. In any case, the graphics are good. The, the color is good. It's easy to see. Uh, it switches back and forth from night mode to day mode very well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm thrilled with it. It's, it's overall a really solid unit. Minor improvements aside, which I think Garmin should listen to their user community and find out what some of these things are and implement them. They, they, they do have some money. They should be able to do these kinds of things. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely still thrilled with this. <clears throat> One other thing to take into consideration between this unit and this unit, I, I love that they were trying to think outside the box and be different than Garmin, but I don't believe, and let me just double check here, I don't believe that this mount, hey, look at that, it's not patented. Come on, really, why would you do the same exact mount but one quarter turn the other way? Really? You know, I've got so many flipping mounts around here. Some of them are for Garmin, some of them are for Wahoo. You could have used the same thing. There's a lot of companies that use the, the Garmin quarter turn mount. There's a lot of companies that use the GoPro mount as a standard. They're not patented. Use them. So, the mounts for these, they suck. If you have aero bars, they don't come with mounts for these, they come with mounts for these. And then you gotta adapt it or you gotta pay additional money to get the, the mount for this. Really, just use the same quarter turn, come on. Anyway, I find that the mounts available for this still on the marketplace today outnumber and outweigh the quality of the mounts with this. So, I still, I don't hate Wahoo, I'm not trying to trash on them. There's just a couple things about it that just said, you know what, it was cool for seven years ago or six years ago or whenever they first came out with this, but they're lagging and the Garmin is not, it's up there. So hopefully I'll get the new Hammerhead Peru 2 and it'll be all the things that I wanted it to be and it'll, be, have, it'll have no glitches whatsoever and it'll be the perfect piece of hardware. No, I'm not drunk, not yet. <clears throat> It could be, it could be that good, I don't know. It seems like it's built on an Android platform which should be relatively stable. We'll see. Anyway, that's my, uh, that's my rant for the day. I'd love to hear your comments, um, you know, about my huge revelation that I switched back from Wahoo to Garmin. Tell me what you love about your Garmin or why you think I'm stupid and tell me what I did wrong on these down in the comments below. Love to hear it. You know, if there's something I can learn from you guys, Always open to it. Uh, until next time, I've been to Cyclist. He's still the boogeyman. Um, 
go ahead and hit subscribe. We love getting new subscribers. Uh, we've gotten a lot lately, and that's awesome. We, we love you all. That's, that's amazing. Um, but like the video, too. If you, if, if you liked it, if, I, if I've given you any kind of content that you like, hit the like button because that really helps us out a great deal. And then uh, stop by and stop by and check out more stuff. And we'll have more stuff. All right. Hey, thanks for stopping by, and we will see you again soon. See you.